right, so we almost made it to the full derivation of the Shockley Reed Hall. So there's some uh, hope in sight. Uh, we're really going to compute this recombination rate now. So in the previous three sections, we first calculated some rates uh, for the trap assisted recombination. So some dn, dt, and dp, dt. Then we related the capture and the relation um, and emission coefficients in equilibrium. Found an expression that they must be related by detailed balance. Then we use that um, relationship to also have emission and capture for out of equilibrium conditions, and we con computed a steady state trap population. That resulted in this pretty long gnarly expression on the bottom left here for little n capital T. We're going to use that now to calculate the rate of whole destruction, which is the net recombination. So this R equals minus dp dt will be the starting point for the rest of this derivation here. All right, so we have a toolbox of equations and expressions that we derived on the right. So let's dive in and calculate capital R, the recombination. So from, from the previous slides, we had an expression for dp dt which was uh, uh, relating capture and emission. And um, we're just going to plug this expression in here, OK? So now we're looking at expressions for uh, occupied traps, OK? We're going to look at nt, uh, number of occupied traps. So pt is kind of. Uh, uh, dependent on nt by capital nt minus little nt, so total traps minus the occupied traps are the empty traps. So we're going to plug that in. All right, so not much happened. We just have one more term, but we can have everything now in terms of um, capture of electrons and uh, CP and, um, and and bring out these expressions. Okay, so. Now we can have the occupation, uh, the expression that we had before, the little nt occupation of traps in steady state. Okay? We'll plug this in here. And that is an expression that gets longer again. So, but nothing much happened. We, we just plugged in the little nt. Okay. Now, we had also in the previous section this um, uh, denominator, uh, A, capital A, it's this longish expression. Now we're going to add this in and put it all on the same common denominator. So we have add A over A in the last expression here. And then we, we spin this out, okay? So we just multiply this out, and this gets to be rather long. But if you look carefully, it can get rather short again. So there's canceling terms, this um, set number two and set number three. So we can cancel terms out, and then the expression becomes really uh, short again. So R is now an expression of Pn and P1, N1. Now remember, we derived an expression for N1 and P1. They are related by the law of mass action. So we can plug this in. P1 times N1 is just Ni squared. All right, so now we have an expression for R that just depends out of, uh, on the um, number of electrons and the number of holes and an equilibrium number of uh, uh, Ni squared. All right, now we can uh, formulate some more items here. Uh, where we use this uh, common denominator A, we're going to look at that common denominator uh, with the coefficients that are up front. So we're going to look at A over these three coefficients, number of traps, Cp, and Cn. Okay? So nothing much happened here. We're just going to come up with some more f physically meaningful expressions for this, um, these terms. All right, so we're going to split the sum into uh, two quotients. And we're going to identify um, them now as uh, one over Cp nt and one over Cn nt. 
And those coefficients actually have a physical meaning. And I'll try to highlight some of this meaning in a minute. So, but for now, we're just going to take this ratio of A over Cp, Cn, and Nt, and plug it into the expression here. And we, we have an expression for the Shockley-Reed-Hall recombination that we could walk away from. This is something that you can deal with. And uh, you have capture coefficients, you have total number of traps. So this is something you could walk away and use. Now, we're going to do a little bit more with this. Um, we have expressions for N1 and P1. And we, we're going to look at uh, uh, the capture coefficients a little bit more in, uh, carefully. And Cn is the electron capture rate uh, uh, in terms of volumes per second. Now, C and Nt is the total capture rate per second. So that's the total number of uh, electrons that are being caught per second. That's the, a rate. If we take the inverse of a rate, we get a time. That is the average time for an electron to be captured by a trap. Now, that is called the electron minority carrier lifetime. It's the electron capture and the uh, total number of traps. There's something similar, the whole capture, uh, uh, related to the whole capture, that is the whole minority carrier lifetime. So these carrier lifetimes are representative of somewhat of the cleanliness of the material. So these are rates or lifetime, uh, either recombination rates or lifetimes of electrons as they exist in these semiconductors. So these are more physical properties we can measure and we can relate to, and tau n and tau p will show up in expressions that are somewhat meaningful. So we use these here in the um, final recombination rate, the Shockley-Reed-Hall expression. So now what you have here is an expression that depends on uh, n and p, number of electrons, number of holes in the system, n i squared, which is something we can calculate, N1 and P1, which is something we can calculate. N1 and P1 are just um, uh, equilibrium numbers uh, of occupation uh, of traps. And uh, they are, the Gs are uh, the degeneracies of these traps. So these are calculatable things. Tp and Tn are somewhat material properties now for a specific material. So we have properties that we can calculate given an N and a P. So this is the Shockley-Reed-Hall expression. And I'd like to just drive home a couple of points here at the conclusion of this section. Now, look at Pn minus Ni squared. At equilibrium, you have the law of mass action, which says Pn is Ni squared. So it's zero. If you are at equilibrium, R, capital R is zero. So, no recombination in equilibrium. No net recombination. Now, you see that um, there's a Pn minus Ni uh, squared. If P, if you say you have a high doping or reasonable N doping, that means N is large and uh, P is uh, reciprocally smaller, but now you say you inject more electrons. So N times P becomes larger than Ni squared due to some non-equilibrium process. Then you have some larger number minus a smaller number. You have a positive number. You have recombination. Okay. Now, what if you had fewer than equilibrium electrons and holes. So Pn uh, is smaller than Ni squared. This whole term could become negative. So then you will have generation. You will have a system of traps that will drive the system back to equilibrium through generation of carriers until R is zero. And if R is greater than zero, uh, if P and N, P times N is larger than Ni squared, It'll drive the system back to equilibrium. All right. So this is um, this rate R 
is sort of an equilibrium restoring uh, process. It drives the system towards equilibrium. Okay? So in the next section, then, we will apply these expressions to a couple of um, uh, very normal cases that happen in, uh, in semiconductor devices. And we'll have expressions for R in terms of uh, tau n and tau p, etc. So I'll see you in the next section.